given the task of starting some summer programs and hopefully going into after school programs. We brainstormed last Tuesday and we wanted um, everybody to come up with, uh, I don't know if everybody can see my screen, first of all, I, I hope you can. Um, these are some of the um, ideas that Billy and I asked the community to come up with. Oh, oh, where'd it go? Uh, uh, I knew it. <laughs> oh. Okay. So the whole screen didn't come up for me, Billy, just the, the whole screen didn't come up. Kathy? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead and um, stop sharing. No, not stop sharing. Go to, you see where it says edit and reply at the top with the down yes. button? Yes. Click on the arrow. Open in Word desktop app. Open. Ah, I can't sign in. Okay, then open it in the browser. So go back. Uh, click on yeah. open in browser. Or just download and open it. I don't even know what it's doing. This, this is my handsome son to me. <laughs> I want you guys to know that we have three people in here. Miss Kwana, Dr. Osoa, we are all listening to you. Um, Billy? Yes. Are you able to share? Let me try. Because I, I don't see where it's, it's. It's got more, yeah, it's got a couple, it's another page now. So it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, it's not going to be shared though the entire page, Billy, with all of the information that we had at the bottom. So I'm going to, um, if you could bring it up, I'm just going to close this one. And then can you bring it up, please? Yeah, let me try. Are you guys uh, seeing my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you're able to see the uh, screen that says we're one United summer camp first draft. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So um, I'm going to uh, uh, basically just as, uh, as Kathy was saying, we uh, were working on the uh, the summer camps, but our goal, of course, because we are a community driven organization, we our um, priority in Tuesday's meeting was to um, involve the team and the community. So, um, this ultimately, the summer camp is gonna use some of the elements of the four agreements and the forty developmental assets. So, in the summer camp. Uh, that's what we that's what we strive for um, is to implement those elements. So just to go over some of the brainstorming uh, after asking the team and the CRTs and the community that was there, uh, we asked them a specific question. We said, if your child or grandchild or a niece or nephew or a youth that you knew was in an after school program, what 
are the takeaways that you would want them to have after this summer program? What would you want them to experience? What would you want them to be introduced to? And um, I'll give everyone a, just a little, a few minutes just to look at some of the brainstorming ideas. Now, everything on this list is what came from the community CRTs um, and team members that was at the meeting on Tuesday. So it, it is a, a long list. So um, I won't say everything that's on here, but you could just kind of review some of these uh, things that are here. Uh, what, what Kathy and I would like to do in this meeting is for anyone that was not at the meeting on Tuesday to uh, contribute uh, to this list, uh, to add to this list, because we, um, we would definitely want insight. After tonight's meeting, um, we're planning to meet with other community members to do a um, strategic planning meeting so that we could hear from the Jarvis Crawfords, Ms. Tanea Dieter, um, uh, Cynthia Session, uh, the some of the pastors that are from the community, Robert Smith. So we will be sharing this same, uh, this same information with them. So now that the community could start giving more insight and ultimately take ownership of this program and future programs that are coming from uh, the team here at uh, We Are One United. So, um, and then we ended it with asking, what are some things that uh, you feel are lacking in the community that the youth need access to? And uh, that was mentors. Uh, someone suggested an organization called 100 Black Men in an Empire. Um, someone suggested a big brother and sister program, uh, having access to the new arena, the hockey arenas uh, for events and um, just to enjoy events and play hockey, to financial and banking literacy and credit and um, credit health. Those are some things that they said they felt they needed more access to. Um, but this will obviously be a growing list because we're gonna meet with more community leaders in, within the next few days or, or week. So, and, and so remember when you are thinking of all these wonderful things that we should be implementing in the programs, these um, programs are, are um, um, a certain amount of weeks long. They're, they're, they will, however, soon one day <laughs> will become, um, you know, a, a set program where we can go all school year, but for now, you know, we only have a certain amount of weeks to get, you know, all this in. And um, and there will be, uh, we're doing specific days and specific hours. So it's, it's time managed. And also when you do think of these things, all put yourself in there as well, because if you can think of them, then possibly you will be um, orchestrating them, so. Does anyone have any 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 suggestions that they can think of? Yeah. So right now we want to open the open the conversation to the team to anyone that was not there on Tuesday, um, idea so that we could add to this list. Maybe you see some things on here that you would have wanted to say, but maybe there are some things that's on that's not here, and and we definitely want to uh, definitely want to hear so that we could um, continue to to just add more value. <laughs> You guys, uh, Bill, is it possible to make it bigger, the document? Because we cannot see it. It's so small. Is that, is that helping? Mm -hmm. Did that make yeah. it? In it's good. It's great. Yes, it did. Okay. Yes. Perfect. And could you move the screen that's kind of on top? It looks like a black area. Just drag it over to the right. It'll get out of the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Question. <clears throat> so, has a 
question? What is the difference between life skills and living skills? Um, according to the team, for I, I saw, I saw those terms earlier on. So, yeah, living course, skills, life skills. Okay, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Okay, so according to the team, some of the life skills that they uh, brought that the team brought up was uh, making decisions in life that's re that's related to your goal, um, making decisions in life, uh, like as it relates to communicating with uh, with friends, with teachers, um, grocery shopping, and then with living skills, uh, they uh, discuss. Um, grooming, personal care. And so we kind of combined it. Uh, you know, some people said life skills, some people said living skills. So we just, we just added everything that the audience was saying. We just put it all, we just put it all on there. So for example, um, a living skill, like you said, maybe um, learning to grocery shop and learning um, to, um, learning you know the the prices and how to gauge you know how much of a certain thing that you want and all that and the living skill may be learning how to actually cook whatever it is that you purchased correct and the goal really is Thank to you. just add to this list to open the floor to to add to contribute to pour more value we really want to hear from the team of, of what you think so that we could add more things uh, to this list, whether you think it's travel, culture, language, um, you know, uh, water painting, oil painting, uh, you know, driving a car. Uh, we just want to continue to add to this. And then when we meet to, with the community, continue to add to that. So we want, the goal is to open the floor to individuals that were not there at Tuesday's meeting so that we could add your insight to this list. And, and all answers are welcomed, right. please. Um, don't think that something is too small or too big. Just, just say what you think or something that you don't see that you think that uh, we would be able to use or the kids will, would like to use or you would like to actually come in and teach and show what needs to be done. Yeah, or if it was your children, if you were dropping them off at a, at a four to eight week summer program, what are some things that you would, that would just really, you know, make you feel good, make you feel proud, um, you know, confident in, in a program like this, uh, if they came back and shared with you, uh, what is it that they could share with you where you would say, wow, I really like this program, I wanna bring them back. I want to tell my neighbors about it. Um, what are what are some things? Um, or if, or if, or if you don't have children, maybe nieces, nephews, family members, cousins, um, or just any any youth. What are some things that you think would be valuable for them to learn? So Billy is travel already on there. I I believe it is. We'll but just. Uh, whatever if we mention anything tonight that's a double i just won't add it but okay. I'm, I'm down right now so travel i'm putting travel on here okay i got it and travel is excellent anything else what other what are some other things that would be valuable oh we're at so where they we cannot talk here Mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say something about to add to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the findings that I made in the Columbus School District, I was on some board. So I used to compare and contrast the grades of, of students that were white or students from privileged backgrounds and the grades and skills of students that were Black, African-American from disadvantaged communities. So I found that 
part of the difference in, in scores and so on was related to international travel. So when we say travel as a slash international travel, for example, we take an entire class, we take them to say Ghana or Sierra Leone or Vietnam, and then they tour. On the tour, they also have uh, classes, maybe go to a, a nearby school, a nearby high school, and then there's somebody there to, to tell them about the history of the school and so on and so forth. You also have some teachers, are commonly the students, as chaperones as you're calling them. So I, I found a big weakness in, in black students, black American students, in terms of knowledge about international affairs. Yes. And this white kids are basically doing this because they had traveled, they had the privilege, they had the connection, or their families had the connections. Whereas we, we may not have those connections. So I also guess international travel. Yeah, it's very important. Okay, so some suggestions, Ghana, Sierra Leone, uh, Vietnam, in, and international overall knowledge and understanding of international and international affairs. Got it. Thank you for that. Anything else? Any other thoughts? Um, I have a potential one. I don't know that it's been mentioned already, but um, things like loans, um, auto loans, yeah. school, how fast the work, um, all yeah, of Yeah, financial literacy. Oh, yeah. I know, yeah. But I guess it's okay, yeah, it's part of that. Oh, go ahead. What was that? You were saying something else? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I said, yeah, I think it can fall under the umbrella of banking and finance. Learning about loans, learning about auto loans, financial literacy, finance. Did you also, did you say financial aid? Learning. Yeah. Financial Learning aid. about the FAFSA, yeah, yeah. Learning about FAFSA, got it. Yeah, those are those all. Yeah, it, it shouldn't just end there. If there is a possibility, they, they could also look at the effects of really credit. How can you manage credit? How can you really credit be beneficial to somebody like in the future, if they want to buy a home, they want to start a business, maybe getting a business loan. So all those things should be factored in in uh, the financial literacy. Mm -hmm. Buying a home, business loans, the effects of credit, what it means. Got it. What else? Any other thoughts? Any other takeaway that? that would be good for the youth to leave our program uh, knowing, or even building, is there, is there something, that, a project that they could work on? Is there a community project? Um, is there any, any takeaways? Back in the day, kind of thinking like entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship? Like, um, Mm -hmm. Like if they were going, moving through the program and they were in the, um, I saw it up top, the culinary arts, you yeah. know, that maybe at the end there could be a little bazaar where everybody who's gone through this, they've learned financial literacy, they've learned that specialty. And then at this bazaar at the end, they could have their little business showcasing, okay, these are the um, desserts I made. Oh, this is my lemonade stand oh this is my um craft store so they could show their showcase and sell their jewelry like you know where they've learned about all these things and at the end there's this um you know culminating project where they really learn to put it into action yeah it's okay so showcase um showcasing their business entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and display uh, showcasing that at the end of the program So help, help them create flyers for their business to advertise it and just yeah, kind so of marketing everything from yeah. front to from start to finish yeah entrepreneurship and marketing and 
basically a business one-on-one -on -one from start to finish. Yes, uh, so it depends on what really like uh, Philip was said, saying if we are going really to assess them in the entry in the first week, and if we find a good number that people are going to be talking about, oh, we want to get a job, or oh, then we can look at how we can really dress them up. Like now we have a parent who, where we can get clothes that they can dress up mm -hmm. for interview, mock interview, where they can do interview. And then also, if we have really a good number of looking at how we can prepare them, like the resume writing and so on, we can look at a group like that because I believe that they will not be doing the same thing, all of them. And uh, yeah, my time yeah. being here, some people look at even being on a pseudo era. Right. So why I'm am I doing that? Asian. So they're all saying just I'm sorry, Zubair, Zubair, what yes, do you for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can really also take them out, even travel locally. Mm -hmm. Like to say, uh, I say that we can even take them maybe to a restaurant or travel locally to experience maybe life in Los Angeles, going to Los uh, restaurant, they're just eating. Yes, it create building that confidence in some people who feel like oh, we cannot even go to that restaurant where that hotel is expensive. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And also it was brought up that um, going to a, a fancy restaurant, quote unquote, um, it will help with etiquette to learn you know, which utensils to use at what particular time and how do you act when you're at this restaurant and what is the proper protocols and all that. So um, it will learn, it will teach hospitality, you know? Yes, great. <clears throat> there was an, a, a, another topic brought up about self-awareness and self-identity, any ideas or topics on on that since since we're um, all here that relates to self-identity, self-awareness, self-esteem, self-confidence? Just as an individual in their community or in their family. I think that would be a great topic when people in a room like yeah, either, yeah, when they come up to brainstorm, discuss what is self identity, how to identify yourself, how do you define yourself, and so on. That's a good topic. And I think, yeah, it's good to me to support it. Just to put some fresh on it or more topics in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You said, how do you define yourself, Zubair? Yeah, because, for example, we have been having problems when you look at either television, newspaper, or anywhere. Somebody else is defining who you are. Mm -hmm. But if we have this youth and we put, we put to them, who, mm -hmm. who are you? How can you define yourself? And so self-identity, that will be a good thing for them to reason, for them to urge their point. So it's a good thing. How, yeah. Okay. Got it. It's not what it's not what people call you. It's what you answer to. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's really because, I mean, we're every everyone's defined as in some way or form, generally by society. But then, what what is your opinion of yourself? How do you see yourself, yeah. and how could we um, enrich and add value? And, and support that um, uh, for, to, for the youth. I think it's very important um, too, because you know um, they might not be getting it anywhere else. They might mm -hmm. not be getting affirmed anywhere else, certainly not on the streets, or they might be getting the wrong 
affirmation, you know? So if we're helping them to identify their, their own awareness, then, you know, not only will they be able to affirm themselves, but then they'll help others learn how to identify and, and affirm in them, you, you know? So yeah. I think it's very important. Yeah. Uh, I think after the meeting, uh, Kathy, I don't. I think it was when me, you, and Nikita met after just to kind of put all of the notes together. We mentioned having an um, an orientation where the parents are there. So uh, because so much of what we're doing, we also want the parents um, on board supporting this because like for example in week one when they're doing their their assessments and their uh positive i am statements of who they are it's important that we have the people that they're around um day to day like supporting that and reminding them and uh everyone basically a, a community everyone on the same page um, and ultimately where we have allies and support in the schools because if we're seeing that uh, the students that we have in this program uh, have a need for mentorship or positive examples of people that are doing the careers they want to go to uh, now we're able to try to get that re positive reinforcement in the schools and uh, at their homes by being really in communication with families schools uh, if they're in on sports teams or, or other programs, church, like where it is truly uh, like it's synergy being created, uh, synergy being, you know, we're being synergetic where we're all working together for the well-being and the safety and the, um, the promoting of wellness for the youth. Right. All right. Anything else? The last few things was uh, dressing professional, going to visit other areas like in L.A. or um, other uh, types of restaurants to get um, just exposed to a different environment. Um, hospitality, learning hospitality, self-aware, how do you define yourself? So uh, there is something in the church room. Mm hmm. Yes, somebody put their public policy education. Public I'm, policy. I'll see. Okay. Public yeah, giving. Policy. Yeah, public policy education. Okay. Advocacy. Then Advocacy. caregiving. Caregiving. Customer service skills. Customer service hey, skill. You guys feel free in case in case you don't you cannot or you don't want to talk, you can really you can really write in the chat so that we can really add on really your suggestions. Absolutely. Uh what what are you guys thoughts on this? Um for a few years I, I was doing some uh, mission work at at, school, at schools in other countries. And um, it was all types of schools with all different types of levels of, of resources from students whose uh, classrooms were literally a, a dirt floor to students whose classrooms were in modern new buildings. And um, what I learned was just seeing how um, passionate the youth is to learn and to learn something new and have the support there. Uh, what it led me to is when I came back home to the States, I would take my nieces and nephews to like soup kitchens uh, for the holidays to help serve. And they would sometimes see other kids, like they'd wake up in the morning and open, open their gifts and have Christmas with the family. And then we'd go to like Martha's Kitchen um, in Indio and they would see families coming in the line and then kids that that were with the families that were like homeless or didn't have anything and um 
I just noticed in my own family how much more giving, giving and open minded, like my my nieces and nephews have become by serving others that may not have that just may be in a tough situation or a financial situation or a homeless crisis at the moment. But just I've just seen them give more and being more like considerate of what other youth may or, or may not have. So I'm thinking uh, just as, as important it is to experience those, you know, uh, luxury environments and really fancy restaurants. What do you guys think about even just introducing uh, the youth to um, like service, leadership through service, like mm -hmm. servant leadership um, of, of helping others that- Helping others, yeah. I have Yes, I think absolutely, Billy. So maybe service projects? Yes, acts of kindness. Yes. So I mean, helping we others. have all seen the chat room. Oh, go ahead, Zubai. Uh, what was the update? We have in the chat room, we have ethics and teamwork. Ethics and teamwork. Yes. But what you are saying is it true because if if the kids, you don't know, really start showing that service is important, introducing them, then even if they grow up, they're not going to be able to do it because they really don't know what it is. But if we start, introducing those to them is really very good. Uh, I have in my Rotary Club that really a father will just give 99, uh, $2 because I take eyeglasses to Uganda for some kids. So oh, yeah. you team up a kid with another kid in Africa and they give just eyeglass. And then when I go back, I bring them a letter. And from there, the relationship really starts from there. Now they, it's only $2, but once a kid starts like that, then they feel how $2, how important, how it has changed somebody's to be able to see the blackboard and read. So, and we always say charity begins at home. So even if we are at home, we can do that. So I, what you're saying is a thing, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it connects back to that, that unity, that unity and, and humanity uh, element of the program uh, of how, um, you know, that there is someone, that there there's always someone else that we could add value to, to their lives in some way, shape or form. And I think that helps us to also welcome uh, positive support and enrichment into our lives as well, because we're, we could make that connection that, oh yeah, I remember I, I helped serve at the soup kitchen or I helped make backpacks for other kids. And, and in, if we're in a place of where we need support or a mentor, we could kind of start making that connection that we actually do live in a world and an environment where uh, support and teamwork and unity um, is is truly what helps us to keep moving forward, growing. Yes, up to what extent are we planning to involve the, the parents? Is it just like the orientation or if a parent wants to attend certain uh, activities, are they going to be allowed or you guys, what is what should be up and you think? We did discuss that, Kathy, did you wanna give? Did you parents wanna... are involved from the very beginning and they are encouraged to come along, come to the classrooms, visit, see what and and how they can have an input in um, you know what's being done there, um, and they could possibly volunteer some time as well. So we want to encourage the parents to be there from beginning to end. Um, and 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 as a matter of fact, it, um, it's the matter of fact, it, it is the parents that we are. Um, uh, how do you say it? We want to get the parents so we can, we want to get the kids, but we want the parents to really see what the program looks like so they can put their input 
so they can be more involved. They'll want to be more involved because they may they may not see something on this list that we that they want to offer that we don't have. You, you know, so um, absolutely, parents 100, 100 percent from the beginning to the end. And hopefully, with us, okay, give us that hundred, Dubair, with us opening the program to the community and to the parents of the children that's in the program and welcoming welcoming them into the the classrooms like they're like Kathy said they're taking ownership and it's empowering them but hopefully they can also see that as increased engagement at the school district um, with uh, when their children are actually at school throughout the school year that they become more involved in the PTAs and advocating for programs like we are one united to be after school programs in the schools and um, just learning how involved they could be once their children go back into the school district. Uh, they could take this example of a six week program, but when their kids are back in schools for six, seven, eight months, that they become more involved that way as well. And we could continue to support and advocate for parents as they need support when their children are back at, back in schools. Absolutely. And the parents will be able to learn some things as well. Like if we're offering, you know, some math skills for, you know, the, the, the student, because, you know, STEM is one of the things that we are trying to embark on. So if we're offering a math and the parent doesn't really, you know, they're not really good at math, maybe they can join in, you know, to learn with their student um, how to do, you know, these math equations. So it's, um, again, you know, parents are 100% um, invited to be involved. What is, when we look at uh, like is this scan, fingerprinting and so on, up to what extent can they really get involved uh, when they don't need to be fingerprinted? Is there an extent? Because I see in Rotary, we have what we call Lila. Uh, if you're going to stay with the kids for three years or even one night, if you're going to stay with them, have some protocols that you have to go through. So if we have the parents involved, up to what extent? That's what the law allows up to what? Because if you're they going to, have do to go through the live scan process, live scan process yeah. if they're going to go through that, then we need to tell them. And those ones who are interested, we need to do that. And what do you think if we were looking at, okay, the parents could be there, but either in a separate session if they're willing. Uh, for example, their kids in a different room and those ones who really and say, oh, I'm not going to go through that scanning and so on, but I want to be there. Can they really be in another room and maybe we recreate something, engaging them, talking to them if they want to? Like their own programming. Like their own program. So, like a adult? Yes, like an adult program. So um, and and so this 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 morning um, we were invited to um, an empowerment program, and I was actually sitting talking sitting next to this young lady and speaking to her about this very thing. There are some um, women that um, need to have English as a second language, and the conversation was, you know, the kids can be in one room. If you know this, they decide they decide to bring their kids to our program. Well, the kids can be in one room, you know, doing something for STEM, and they could be in the other room learning conversational, you know, English. So I, I understand what you're saying, Zubair. So you know, one the kids can be doing this thing over here, and then over here, you know, again, parents can be learning math while their kids are learning math. So they can, you know, begin to help each other. But I understand exactly what you're saying because we talked about that just this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many games do we have? Because although kids are coming in, that but they love to play games. What games do we have in there? Um, that's a question to by here. So what we've done with the that, uh, from the list that we have so far of all of the ideas is that we have condensed the eight weeks uh, to, um, since we're doing two programs, one in Palm Springs at James O. Jesse and then another in Desert Hot Springs. Um, 
we have shortened the program to uh, um, more towards the end of the summer uh, to around four or five weeks instead of the eight weeks that we originally had it. And we um, have started to formulate based off of the feedback that we're getting um, a, a process. So within these five weeks, we're starting with um, a lot of the activities will be based off of the assessments. So during for the week one, um, each, each youth in the program will get to take an assessment that shows uh, their interest. If it's, if it's the arts, the sciences, um, medicine, mechanics, a little bit of all, a little bit of both. And um, what we plan to do is incorporate that for example, in week two, when we get to leadership and community building, we plan to incorporate activities based on the students, um, based on their skills and, and their likes. And then we're also looking at grade levels. So um, after having a, a few conversations and also speaking with John, we, want, we now see that we wanna have like an eight to an 11 year old group an 11 to like 13 and then like a 14 and up. So the activities will be based on assessments and age. And, the, and um, we've started also looking at science, these science boxes, and um, it's called Generation, Generation Genius. And uh, it comes with grade level STEM projects in these boxes that we could use throughout the week when we're doing, well, like for example, when we're focusing on STEM. So there's still a few factors that play into the type of games or activities or projects that we'll have. So if you were talking something like, you know, example, uh, Monopoly or something like that, like regular board games, we, we you know, we, we're not saying that the kids can't have fun, but we would like to take, you know, some STEM games or something that's really stimulating their minds and make it a game, make it a fun thing for them. Um, so, you know, we're, we're not just providing, you know, uh, uh, a monopoly or a whatever, a, a game. The games have to have some kind of uh, a, a purpose. So, yeah. I agree with you, but I'm still not happy with you. I'm sorry <laughs> to say that because I was a kid. When it's really summer or break, I'm looking at how am I going to play soccer the whole day and so on? Oh, and also we, when you're talking about stream. So Zuba here, let me share this. So we do have recreation, hockey, tennis. So that's through the partnership with the, um, through the new um, facilities on the desert yeah. to play hockey. Yeah. Um, I know someone at the at Cathedral City um, Tennis Club that does kid lessons, and they could also come to location and do things that don't require a tennis court, but just diff, uh, they use soft tennis balls and they bring their rackets and they could do some different drills. Um, James O. Jesse has basketball courts, flag football. So we, we do, it's definitely going to be fun. It's going to be recreation in there. There's going to be free time to where if we do have games that they want that they want to play, but we want it also to introduce them and be innovative in a way to introduce them to, um, you know, working with different type of um, like science projects that create, uh, uh, you know, light and energy um, and building things that they could that move that mobilizes them and learning about math through building cars and, or through taking measurements to build kites and flying kites. So um, like you said, there's definitely gonna be recreation sports and activities in there. And they will have free time to where they want to do something other. But I mean, I feel like this is also challenging us to come up with, I, with games and activities and learning environments to where, you know, um, we are not relying on, um, uh, that we're, we're not relying on like ready-made types of uh, recreation, but we, that we're encouraging them to develop and even create new 
that they want to do. Like, hey, you know what? We just built robots. Let's race them. Uh, we yeah. just you know, learned how to fly kites. Let's see who can fly their kite the highest. Let's measure how high these kites went. Um, so, I mean, we could take things that are okay, already- I agree with you. And I agree add- with you. So, yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, so- and then Billy. So did yeah. we um, discuss um, weekend activities? Because I know Mr. Epps had previously talked about a program that he had where if the kids did all the right things throughout the week, they earned credits to come to these weekend activities. So maybe a weekend activity could be a game night or a karaoke night or a movie night or spoken word. Like he had all of these examples of, um, you know, a theater performance, like where you get credit to attend these weekend events. And I think that when we're talking about, you know, the the deficit of, of things for kids to do during the weekend, you know, the parks are closed, there's no recreation, you know, Monday through Friday, they already have, you know, things built in, you know, maybe the um, summer program doesn't go all day, so we can supplement or whatever. But the weekend, I feel like, is the greatest need because there's not anything for the kids during the weekend. The parks are closed. You know, they're just left to their own devices at that time. All right. So I added that. So weekend activities, yeah. game nights, and then earning points throughout the for week. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, a false boy want to see music somewhere. Mm-hmm, for also, sure. when you look at the minorities, we all have different games. The most games that I see here may be basketball, but the rest are maybe white games. So <laughs> for us Mexicans, we play soccer. <laughs> huh? So you, you <laughs> for us Africans, we play music and dance. And then we eat. So uh, that's why I'm saying, hey, I don't see music here. I don't see soccer here. I'm sorry, but I, I would like to see that if possible. If we can identify people in the community that are singers, they are going to volunteer just to support those people. I think that's a great idea. Don't, I, yeah, I, don't we? Go ahead. I'm I, sorry. Go ahead. I personally know at least five families from the Desert Highland community uh, that have children that's in the Palm Springs uh, AYSO at Demuth Park that play soccer. So I think soccer would definitely be a hit in the community because we have a lot of a lot of, of kids from that community are are already playing soccer, in, including like all seven of my nieces and nephews. So um, soccer soccer would be ama- awesome. I think it would go very well. And so, Doctor Poso is going to be number one, the goalkeeper. <laughs> um, and you're talking about music and dancing and foods and and uh, bringing in somebody, but the kids themselves can create, you know, a a small skit, a theater. You know, um, they can put on a concert or you know have talent show. These are some of the things that they can do. We don't necessarily have to bring somebody in, but they can do these things. I believe it, I agree with you. But also, if you bring those people, they are motivators. They're also like, oh, maybe they can come in one day, two days, that like they're trying to show them techniques and so on. And then maybe at the graduation, we do like competition. We have two choirs or whatever they perform, and then we give them some kind of trophies. Or even the soccer teams, we team, we make them like compete. So things like that that makes them happy. And maybe the mayor is our mayor. We can invite on the closing, and then people are really happy. Even on our graduation, and so they gave us the trophy. The mayor was there. So things like that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, adding that to the list. So it We're sounds almost like- right on time. So, was that performing arts, Zubaker? More performing arts? Yes. I like that. 
right? Why don't I see you? what you want to say? Because we have five minutes. I said everything. <laughs> no, but I think, you know, in those um, outings, you know, music, having music in your own, but um, I took my children, which they actually loved, um, but they have a symphonies for youth at the Disney concert hall where they have activities for the kids and then they actually get a chance to watch performances from the LA Phil. Uh, so like that could be a fun a field trip type of idea um, where you know they can make their own music but then they can also see professionals in a professional environment and it gives these uh, you know other ideas on careers you know what is the conductor you know what is the first chair who are the quartet like they learn so much at that program okay got that added to the list so uh, right now i'm going to turn the speaker to me i would like to say if you guys have any Closing comments, Kathy, and then Bill, if you have an ask from us or something really important you want us to know before we close, because we have a few minutes remaining. Um, I, I just, I just, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say, um, please, um, we want, we need, we want your help. We need your help. This is something that we're trying to put together for our kids, for the community. And yes, we do want all, you know, the parents of the kids involved, but we need, you know, you all involved as well. So don't think that there's nothing that you cannot do. Um, there's plenty that you can do. So um, even if, if you didn't say anything or speak um, tonight, that's fine. Just let us know, you know, get, please get in touch with Billy or myself um, so um, we can know your feedback. Um, because it, we, we want you to do this now so we can plan it out now instead of waiting until it starts and then you're like, oh, oh yeah, but um, so we can get it, you know, um, implemented into the program. So, and, and um, everybody's welcome. Again, please don't think that your idea is too big or too small because we're welcoming every idea. Good? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, Kathy, you you pretty much you said everything that um, everything that I was thinking. Um, uh, I mean, we have, as you can see, we have a pretty long list of of ideas and suggestions from the community, and we we added to it in a positive way tonight. So some of these things will be um, in progress um, for um, you know maybe during winter break or summer break or spring breaks or after school programs or throughout the year where we'll be able to continue to add and, and continue to just grow the program in ways of where we can start in, even incorporating more elements. And even as the team grows, um, getting others to teach some of the different subject areas. So um, again, I agree 100% with what Kathy said. We invite and encourage everyone to share ideas, connect with us, reach out within the next few days to the next week, we plan on meeting with community leaders in both communities and sharing this as well, uh, because we do want them to be connected because they, this program is for them. It's gonna be led by them. So we'll be meeting with the community as we, and then we'll take that and start finalizing the dates and times and the details uh, of, the, of the program and then start looking for um, leaders to lead in the different areas that, that will be needed from, from us and primarily from the community. Yeah. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, is Candace over there? You want to say anything if you're there? Were you talking to me, Zubair? I'm, I'm sorry, did you say something to me? Yes, please. We need to hear, we would like to hear from you, please, if you can. Well, I was just listening and taking it all in. Um, very interested in the youth program. The music um, would be an area where I would want to be involved in teaching the kids 
some music. You can teach a kid a song and it'll stay with them for a lifetime. And teaching them a positive song, something that can get down in them is a good thing. And they can take and carry that with them. So music is really good to add to the list, I think. Got it. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Emma, do you like to say something? Um, no, not that I can think of off the top of my head. I think we've been very thorough. Um, lots of, I appreciate everyone's feedback and participation. Thank you so much, Vladi. Uh, yes, well, since I was on a Tuesday meeting, I just really want to like could jump in so people who had a chance, but I also want to mention if you remember what we talked after was about giving them some sort of like a lasting giveaway at the end of the whole program and be it's like something different, not something like just to like, you know, like a, the same thing they will get on the other backpacks, but something they, some sort of value and because we will, we will need the fundraising team help because uh, Carrie had some pretty interesting ideas too. And I really love that idea because it's good to have something they will kind of cherish and appreciate. Absolutely. I'll add that to the list. We appreciate it from each of you. And I would like to give the opportunity to our CEO, Mr. John Epps. We know you nowadays you did not want to talk, but we can't really let you go like that. So I would like to invite you to say something and then close the day. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Zubair. And thank you everyone for your participation. It was really good to be able to kind of sit back and hear the ideas um, from Tuesday. I think uh, great, great work with the community to start to build that list. And I think um, really helping the community to begin to identify what some of the opportunities are and then working with them now going forward to be able to take advantage of those opportunities. So I think this was a really good exercise tonight. I, again, I would love to see us do it with the pastors from the churches or with some of the youth in different schools so that, you know, it's a fuller voice, but I think this is a great beginning. And so for those of you who came, Candace, thank you for being here tonight. Emma, thank you. Ms. Vladi, thank you for, for taking time to be with us. Angelica, thank you for the technical support. Um, Kathy and Billy, you are doing an excellent job. Keep up the good work. And for our tonight's host, can we give a, a little bit of applause for uh, Dr. Zubair and, and his, um, what do we call it? His entourage oh there in the Springs, uh, <laughs> Dr. Persoa and Ms. Kwana. So let's give everybody kind of recognition. You know, sometimes, you know, it's the little details, it's the little things that really count and you know, building a list like this might not seem like a lot today, but you know, I, I have a list that I built 20 years ago, and the fruit of that is still coming. So, you know, what you guys are doing is really planting seeds and, and growing things that will again benefit not just people today, but certainly generations to come. And so I want to thank each and every one of you for your time tonight. Uh, please, if you have more ideas, you can go to the website and just click on contact and just type a note to us. It's fine. Uh, if you see these guys, you can definitely grab them and talk to them on the street. And uh, if you're not sure about our website, it's weareoneunited.org. So it's very simple and all one word, weareoneunited.org. And certainly we do a lot of work with on social media. So make sure that you are, you know, checking us out on Instagram and whatever else we're on. I only know one thing, Instagram. Um, and the last but not 
least thing I like to say is, you know, what we want to do again is empower the community so that as these programs come, they're not something from us, but it's something that grows up from within the community and what they're looking for. So make sure if you know other people in the community, uh, and again, we're talking about across the whole Inland Empire, right? But if you know people, please encourage them to come to this Thursday night meeting. We'd really love to have them be a part of this conversation. And, you know, that way they'll get our notice too. And if there's something they want done in their community, this is a great opportunity to share that and to get some attention. So with that being said, uh, Mr. Zubair, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to kind of close this out. And for each and every one of you, please have a good uh, weekend because it's almost the weekend. And so I know everybody's looking forward to the weekend and uh, enjoy yourselves and know that we can't do this work without you. So thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing and working with each one of you as we go forward. So good night.